Hello everyone, Tim Sendelback, Firehouse Editor-in-Chief. We're here at the Illinois Fire Service Institute um, to bear witness to some, uh, some research on firefighter health and safety. We've got all the, uh, the components of the research, all the participants of the research here with us for a moderated panel. What I'm going to do is I'll start off with uh, Gavin Horn, who is our, uh, the Director of Research at the Illinois Fire Service Institute. Gavin's going to kind of give us a synopsis of the research, then we'll introduce each one of the uh, additional research uh, partners. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, this is an exciting day. This is an exciting month for us here at the Illinois Fire Service Institute. This is a project that has been a long time coming, something that we've discussed with many of our friends and our partners for, for years in order to bring this together. I think we're, we realize that firefighting is a dangerous occupation um, and it's becoming more dangerous uh, each time because of the changes in the fire ground, because of what we are facing and because of how it affects the human body. Um, we've uh, for years done research focusing on the cardiovascular system at IFSI from the time that Denise Smith was a graduate student here at the University of Illinois. And we understand that sudden cardiac events are one of the leading acute concerns in the fire service. About 40 to 45 percent of all line of duty deaths occur as a result of sudden cardiac events. And that's a, a very acute, shortly after the firefighting event. We're also starting to understand the link between firefighting and chronic concerns such as cancer. And by partnering with NIOSH, uh, we began working with them in 2010-2011 to, uh, to do some pilot work to really start to understand what is being produced in the fires and what gets on the gear that the firefighters wear and then what gets through the gear that firefighters wear. And to tie this all together, we need to understand the modern fire environment. And I think some of the, the seminal groundbreaking research in the fire service has been done focusing on the modern fire environment that, that Steve has done at UL. So this project is the first opportunity that we've all had to work together in order to address all of these concerns. How are the leading chronic and acute health concerns affected by the modern fire environment and then by partnering with individuals with companies such as Globe that can help us to understand how that affects the gear that we wear. How can we translate that to the NFPA standards and our friends at IAFF help us to understand how this affects the human, the workplace as well. So it's an honor to be here and uh, we look forward to taking any questions that, that everyone might have. Well, this is actually a, a beautiful continuation of the work that we've done characterizing the physiological strain of firefighting. And we have been focused on the cardiovascular strain of fighter, firefighting along with the thermal strain, particularly in relation to sudden cardiac events, but also to do with job performance and the ability to continue work in a safe fashion. And I think Gavin said it perfectly well by bringing together partnerships that are totally invested in firefighter health and safety and the interconnectedness of that. So we will extend our understanding of cardiovascular strain in a modern fire environment like we've never been able to do before. In fact, this is the first study in which we've looked at physiological strain, we or any other researchers, in a modern fire environment. And that has implications for cardiovascular risk acutely as well as carcinogenic risk or exposure risk long term. Well, uh, NIOSH is part of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Centers for Disease Control. So. Uh, research is a major focus of what we do and for this particular project our, our primary focus is looking at the chemical exposures um, both in the air what gets on the skin and then what also gets into the body um, for this particular study we're, we're really expanding upon our earlier work where we primarily focused on PAHs and then some of the aromatic hydrocarbons like benzene and toluene this time around we're looking at um, flame retardants dioxins and ferrons, which are combustion byproducts of flame retardants. Uh, we're looking at, uh, of course, the PAHs and the volatile organic compounds, the, the things that we expect are gonna be in the, the fire environment. Um, we're doing a lot of the, the same type of measurements we did previously. We're doing uh, dermal sampling on the neck and uh, on the hands. We're, we're looking at um, what's in the air and then we're also uh, evaluating what's getting on to the, the, the uh, turnout gear. Um, so we're testing turnout gear before and after the fires. And then we're also uh, evaluating some simple gross decontamination methods um, to see how effective they are at removing that contamination that's on the gear, as well as what off gases from the gear. So we have a lot of different things that we're looking at. Um, 
And it, it is a really great opportunity to be able to partner with IFSI and UL and, and all, the, all the partners here and looking at the modern um, environment, the modern fire environment um, that has foams and plastics and all those things that you're going to encounter on a regular basis, um, but of course produces a lot of different uh, contaminants. Over the past decade, UL has been involved with essentially studying the fire service workplace and really beginning to take that environment and understand how tactics fit into that environment. Whether it's ventilation, whether it's different types of building construction, uh, all of those different components that, that are an end result of how complex firefighting really is. And we've tried to break down all of those tactics. I mean, we've all heard the, that's the way we've always done it. Well, we've been questioning every tactic the fire service uses and understanding when certain things make sense and when they don't make sense. And uh, you'll see one component of that during the comparison between the going through the front door versus conducting a transitional attack. So our component of this project is geared around creating 12 fires that are as close to identical as possible so that when we do add in the human element, which our colleagues uh, have spoken so well about, that as those firefighters begin to operate, that we are comparing apples to apples from a uh, source fire anyway, that you're all interacting with uh, the same baseline and what comes out of that both as a uh, positive outcome of the tactics as well as the exposure can all be traced back to uh, the same source term and the fire measurements that we're making. Stephen, I, I think there's an additional point just to add to this. This is an advocacy for one tactic versus the other. This is true research saying you use this tactic, here's your exposure level, here's your cardiac strain level. So the research speaks for itself. We're just taking one level of research and building upon it. And Gavin, Denise, and, and Kenny and I have talked about this for a long time, and, and we always talk about the the tactics and firefighter safety and, and what it means for victim tenability and things along those lines. But ultimately, all the decisions that get made on the fire ground are made for certain reasons. Typically, it's made for the victim or firefighter safety, but there's so many aspects of that that include your stress, the stress that you receive while you're performing different tactics, what you see, what you feel is going to impact your cardiovascular system what you get into and how long you crawl around and how long it takes you to perform a search is going to change your exposure. So none of these things exist alone. It's bringing all of these things together with the, the real value is, but I think in many cases it took us all to break it down individually for years until we got to this point. And it's just exciting that we made it to this point. Um, well, over the years, as you all know, uh, turnout gear and personal protective equipment um, has become more and more protective. Um, and it's done a very good job at the thermal threats and the flame threats that have been typically its mission. Uh, now we're discovering that there are a lot of other threats that we need to be looking at. So we have spent a lot of time working with Denise and Gavin on physiological monitoring, for example. Um, and this um, project really gives us the opportunity to look at um, what residuals there are on the turnout gear um, how we can make that gear safer for the user, both in terms of perhaps developing gear that would be less absorbent of the particulates that are con of concern here for cancer, um, but also perhaps be um, decontaminated more easily. So we're really interested to find out, um, you know, the data that gets generated from this study about what does get on the gear compared to what gets on the skin and what um, decontamination procedures are uh, more effective um, so we can really start to change how people look at the care and cleaning and washing of their gear as we go forward. So uh, we're really pleased to be part of the program and to be with all the great science that we see here today. Um, and you know, we wanted to make sure that this project had the opportunity to start out with uh, all new gear so that everybody in the study could have the same baseline so that we could really measure the differences between you know, one iteration and the next iteration. So our role here also was to sort of supply the gear that everybody's going to need to make this project work. So we're very pleased to be a part of it. And thank you guys for including us. I'm the director of training for Cleveland Division of Fire. Uh, I also represent the International Association of Firefighters 
in the building codes process. I'm a proud member of the UL Firefighter Safety Research Institute. And, uh, you know, I spent a long time reviewing firefighter fatality reports. And our group spends a lot of time discussing firefighter safety and reducing the injuries, reducing the exposures for firefighters, and obviously reducing the fatalities. And if there's one thing that I think uh, I found or that we have found is that there are many spokes to this wheel. Is we, there's no silver bullet. We can't just say, okay, we're gonna get involved in the codes and all of a sudden we're gonna dr dramatically reduce firefighter fatality. We can say we're gonna improve turnout care and all of a sudden improve firefighter fatalities. Uh, there are many spokes that go to it, whether it's training, education, proper PPE, using your PPE properly or protecting yourself from cardiovascular disease or exposure to carcinogens, uh, we really need to take a multi-prong approach and a holistic approach. And I think this is the value of a research like this. We're looking at the holistic approach of tactics and how it impacts our firefighters physically and, uh, you know, not now, but in the future. So uh, I think I'm excited by this. We've been, we've been anticipating this for a long time and I can't wait for the results, and I'm truly excited to be here with this group. It's always exciting to be able to come down and see research um, in progress and to see it actually take place. And to be in a group um, of the researchers that you have at this panel is incredible. I mean, these are individuals that have really brought to the fire service some significant change in information. Um, with, with the cancer that we're, we're having in, in, in the fire service, um, for us, every September, the third week, uh, we have a, a memorial that we, we, we have our line of duty deaths. Uh, this year, we're going to honor uh, 309 firefighters that are going to be on that wall this year in 2015 for the ceremony. 60% of those firefighters died from occupational cancer. So this is really close. This is about taking uh, the research that, uh, that is so important to us. And we haven't, the fire service has not relied on that in the past. Matter of fact, we kind of just said, hey, we can, you know, we'll make up our own little pass. We'll do this. We'll do that different. But now we can't, th those days are long gone. So we have to have not only um, a good research, that research that has some sort of impact directly on the firefighters. What change can we make? What change can we do in tactics? How can we do, how can we minimize the exposure? Um, we have firefighters all over that, that come to work every day and it's not gonna happen to me. I'm not gonna die of cancer. That's gonna be somebody else. That's somebody I read about. I'm not gonna have a heart attack today. That's gonna be somebody else. But that's not the case. Because that somebody else some days is you. And, and that's what we have to stop. So being able to take this and, and, and really having Gavin and Denise invite you know, the IAFF here to take a look at this, this is what we need to reinforce our position out there, to take uh, the laws, the cancer presumption laws, 